recently, and they said it's it's not all that clear who is running the government. They're really looking for the Egyptians to clarify that because over the last 24 to 48 hours, those diplomatic channels have been kind of clogged as the Egyptians have been kind of working this through themselves. They've been preoccupied with their own situation and not really reaching out to the United States. They know the players in this Supreme Military Council, but they don't know who is going to really be running the show. They want to know who they're going to be dealing with. What is the role of uh, Vice President uh, Omar Salman? What's his future role going to be? And, and then they also want to see what this military is going to do. They said they're going to answer the demands of the protesters. They want to see them lift that emergency law, start some constitutional changes, and start this real political dialogue with the people so that they can move towards free and fair elections. A lot uncertain right now, Randy. And we don't know how long the military uh, will be watching the country's affairs or in charge of the country's affairs, but how is the relationship between the United States and, and the military in Egypt? Well, the relationship is a very long and a very deep one and a, and a pretty good one. Um, we heard Barbara Starr talking about that earlier. You know, Egyptian uh, military officials have trained in the United States. There's a long history of contact and close relations. And also, you can't forget that the U.S. gives about $1.3 billion in, in aid to the Egyptian military. So that aid could really be a lever right now. Obviously, U.S. officials are not threatening to withhold the aid, but certainly that's the unspoken message. If you don't move the country in the direction which you promised um, and you, you know, keep some kind of military rule without moving forward, certainly the U.S. is going to be able to use that aid to pressure the Egyptians to take further steps. Certainly still a long road ahead. Elise Labatt, thank you.